Awesome. We're here. We're here. Welcome, guys. Kevin, Dr. Jamie. And Kevin, I understand you have to leave. You have a hard stop. We don't come. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to push it back, but uh, we'll, we'll make do. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Uh, well, good to see you both again. Thank you. Um, and uh, before we get started, um, do you mind just introduce to the world, you know, who you are and what you're working on? Kevin, you want to go first? Uh, no, after you, Kevin. Uh, you're so gracious. Uh, <laughs> So first of all, Wayne, uh, before, before I go any further, I just want to you know, publicly uh, thank and acknowledge you for the work that you're doing, uh, particularly in this convening. And, um, you know, I remember when we were together in person, um, you know, how inspired I was by the event. But also, as I said to you a few days ago, privately, I'll say to you publicly now, uh, that I do believe that you have a unique power of convening us. And uh, I know it, it, it's hard work to do, but I, I think you have the unique power. You are our unifying uh, leader here in this space. And uh, I want to say that publicly to affirm you and, and thank you. Um, so I'm Kevin Detner. I'm the founder of, of Hurdle. We are a leading culturally intentional teletherapy company started here in Washington, D.C., recently closed the Series C at the top of the year and working feverishly to grow our company nationally. Awesome. Um, so I'm uh, Dr. Jaime Mendoza-Williams. Um, I am the Vice President of Member Care at MindRight Health. Um, and at MindRight Health, uh, we provide uh, mental health coaching via text message to young black and brown youth and young adults. Awesome, awesome. Sorry about that. that I mean, I mean, those are, um, I appreciate you both being here. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious, and this is talking about the future of, of therapy and tech. You now, you know, both of you, are, I feel like, are unique positions that we were, were in 2019, like with how the whole ecosystem has changed. But, but, uh, but, but that, I mean, what, what led you to join my right? Like, what was it, you know, you joined, I think, a couple of years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I have been with Mind Right um, almost since the beginning, um, a few months after, maybe a year after. Um, but I was intrigued by the service that we provide, right? Um, having come from public schools for the last 15 years, um, and 10 of those years being a psychiatric social worker and working in South Central LA, where I was also born and raised and being able to do that work in my own community. Um, I realized, you know, and also being a, a, a Latino man myself, that there's a huge stigma to, to therapy, right? Um, especially uh, even thinking of like my title, right? When, when I was doing that, a psychiatric social worker, what black, black or brown young person is gonna walk into my office, right? Um, so uh, yeah, just taking all those experiences into consideration um, and looking at the type of service that we have to offer um, young people that historically have never been offered these types of services um, was something I, I couldn't turn down, so. Awesome, awesome. And, and Kevin, you know, what, what let you start start hurdle? I know you have a, a, a journey. Um, you know, it was always hurdle. So can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, just as a, I, I was able to just push my call back. So I'm, I'm good on time. Oh, awesome. um, well, you know, I, I uh, have a public health background and I worked myself into mental exhaustion a few years back and I struggled to find a therapist that I could form you know, what, what I now know is con called a therapeutic alliance with. Um, and after I did find a therapist, um, I was asked this question, uh, have I ever considered doing anything in digital health? And, you know, always been interested in solving public health problems. Uh, a light went off in that moment. Uh, and I decided at that time, as you sort of alluded to, Wayne, when we started our company called Henry Health, and we were super focused on serving um, black men. And in, in, in that thinking, I made the correlation between unmanaged stress and untreated mental health issues. 
uh, being one of the drivers of why black men have the lowest life expectancy of any population. And so, you know, here we are three years later, the name of our company is Hurdle, as in, you know, we hurdle over the obstacles of life uh, and we're super focused on serving black people and other minorities now. Awesome, awesome, thanks, thanks for sharing. You know, I feel like the conversation around like therapy with the pandemic and and different forms of technology has is, is exploded in the last year. Um, um, but yet the forms of therapy historically, at least for me in my own body, it's just like, okay, you're going to someone's office to have, you know, sit down and have a conversation. We know that has changed a lot with COVID and then there's like, no, um, I'll be at mine right. It's not. It's it's a mental space, and then I, heard, well, I think you do. Different things. So, how do you feel like you know therapy and, and the mental health space in general is changing? You know, you know, with technology as a whole, and, and kind of where you see that's going. Muted. If you muted, that I mean mute. Right? My apologies. Uh, so I think for me, um, you know, mental health care comes down to like money, time, access, and and stigma. Those are some things that usually get in the way, right? For people, um, either you can't afford it, you don't know where to go for it, um, you can't make time in your day because you work two or three jobs, or you're, you know, you have all these responsibilities. Um, so I think that with technology coming into the picture um, in the recent years, it's uh, not all of it, but many, many of the folks out there um, like Hurdle, like MindRank, we're addressing those stigmas, right? We're addressing those hurdles, <laughs> as you will, uh, that people go through in order to get, you know, in order to get mental health care. Um, so I think if we continue to work at those and breaking down those barriers that most people of color continue to, um, to face when even thinking about mental health care, I think we'll be in a better place. Um, so as technology continues to grow and iterate and uh, and is able to do more things for people, I think it's also important um, to just really take into consideration uh, the fact that you know there's a lot of cultural issues that also play into um, whether someone goes to get mental health or not, and a big part of that uh, stigma has has to do a big part with that. Right. Um, I think we all know that we grew up in, in homes or in communities where uh, as black and brown men uh, in particular, uh, mental health is a, like a faux pas. Right. Like no, no one really needs it. It's just something that's there. Um, and, and even that sometimes, right, even that's hard to identify for some folks that it even exists. So uh, but yeah, I, I, I think that the future of mental health and therapy is is um, Lo looks good in in my perspective um, as far as a different avenue and way uh, for people to actually seek the support they need in a way that works for them. Yeah, I I agree with, with everything uh, that was just said. I think what I would add to it is uh, twenty twenty. I, I was having a conversation with my fifteen year old a few days ago, and I was asking him because he loves history. I said now. When, when the history books are written about um, 2020, what do you think um, historians are gonna call 2020, right? You know, we, we know it as the year of the, the pandemic and certainly, you know, the, the year that we saw the murder of George Floyd. But in a broader context, I really see what we've sort of been, to, been through is, is the, the year of the racial reckoning, right? And so particularly, you know, to build on what was just said, you know, five years ago, we were not talking about the mental health of black and brown people. We were not publicly talking about the member, the mental health of members of the LGBTQ community, right? So what has happened this, this last year is and even at companies like MindRight and Hurdle, I think, you know, what we share in common is we believe this hard truth. And that hard truth is that the mental health care system, as we know it, was not designed for us. It was designed for middle class white families who experienced one single trauma. So really where we are in 
we sort of meet at this moment where telehealth is here to stay. Um, that's one of the sort of results of the pandemic. But also with telehealth being here to stay, we also are sort of at this inflection point that we're honest about the experience that people of color are having in this country and that systems were not designed for them often don't work for them, right? So, you know, my experience, I always go back to myself having experienced depression um, and, and attempting three times at therapy, failing three times before I ultimately connected to a therapist that could support me. And, and that experience is not unique. 50% of African-Americans terminate therapy prematurely, meaning they don't accomplish their clinical goals. That number, by the way, is 33% for the general population. So this question of cultural competency is incredibly important. Yeah, yeah, agree, agree a thousand percent. Um, I think, let me know both of you can ask this question, but I'm, I'm curious, you know, you, you, you touched on uh, that the current system was not designed for us. Right, uh, which if we look at history, like a lot of system designs, I talk about black and brown humans and black and brown men, particularly. Um, and I think I know you all know this day that there's a lack of diverse therapies, or or like you know, it's like less than ten percent. I'm curious, are you are you all working to help improve that space as well, in terms of like helping get more um, diverse therapists in the space to help support the growing need? Or, um, yeah, I asked that question. You want to jump in there? Uh, I'll go after you. Yeah, I, so the first thing I would say, Wayne, you're right. Less than 4% of the therapists in the color in the country are people of color. That number is even lower for psychiatrists, right? So, um, you know, what, what I would just say, I think about this problem in in a couple of ways. Um, the, the, there's a long-term solution to it, meaning, you know, we got to get ahead of ourselves on the workforce issue, which is why, you know, um, social work programs, clinical programs at HBCUs are incredibly important because we really need to build out our workforce, right? But then on the other side of that, um, I think that's where solutions like mind right and hurdle a man because how we see ourselves is having a bit of cultural competency um in the in the in this marketplace right so you know it is true most of my therapists the therapists who support our work are people of color and it is also true that you're likely to have better health outcomes or better clinical outcomes when you're paired with someone who, who looks like you, but that is not a guarantee. So, so what we do at Hurdle that's different is that we train our therapists in an evidence-based technique that helps them improve their cultural humility and responsiveness. I believe that most therapists in this country are, are noble people. Like, you know, it's a noble profession, just like, you know, being a, a, a school teacher. So really what this is about is acknowledging that, you know, our, our professionals don't have the bank of experiences to relate to people like me and you. And how can we equip them to better support um, whoever might land in front of them sitting, you know, in, uh, in the virtual world, like even on, on their couch? I think that's the fundamental question that we're, trying, we're grappling with. Yeah. Uh, I also think that um, for particularly, you know, as a clinical social worker, um, you know, I remember when I was in school, I was one of like maybe eight men in our program at USC and probably one of two Latino men. And there was one black guy in our, in, in my cohort. When, and this was again in 2005, but nonetheless, it hasn't changed that much. 
you know, um, there's fewer and fewer men of color and people of color in general going into the, you know, into the profession. But um, I will say that uh, just like uh, Kevin just mentioned, I think what um, what's most important is that, you know, we're really talking about and having some type of uh, understanding that like cultural humility and being able to really understand one's culture is super important when servicing people of color. You know, in social work, we talk about goodness of fit, right? And uh, and that's looking from as a therapist to your client, right? But it's also the other way around, you know? And I always mention to people like, you know, going to therapy and finding the right therapist is like putting on a pair of shoes that probably aren't the right fit. You're gonna know it exact, exactly when you put them on. It doesn't fit right, yeah. right? So you try a different pair of shoes that fits just perfect. And I think a lot of people don't understand that you have those rights. You have the right to be able to say, I don't connect with you. I need, I want to connect with my therapist. I want someone that gets me, right? People think they go to therapy and that's it. If that one doesn't work, you're done, right? Like there's no need to keep looking. Everyone's going to be like this. I'm not going to get along with everyone. Everyone's not going to know and understand me. Um, and a lot of people give up. Um, but I really encourage people to continue looking for that right fit. Because uh, there is there is a right fit out there. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Thanks, thanks for sharing. Uh, I'm curious. Um, well, one for those who are watching, um, please use the ask a question feature in the chat. Um, if you have a question for a panelist, or, or you ask it in the chat, and so I'm gonna take a couple of questions in a few minutes. Um, but I did do want to ask um, that that I mean, you, you're you're a test based um, uh, service with mine, right? Uh, why do you you know? Do you, and let me know if you can't answer this, but how do you feel like being test based is like the 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 way to go and the solution to reach you know uh, your your demographic and do you see it evolving out of tests? Yeah. Um, so the one thing I will say um, is that you know our our model using uh, SMS text versus an app or something. Um, We've noticed that, you know, we're meeting people where they're at. Again, you know, going back to that same statement, um, young people um, are on their, on their phones, right? And many times, uh, maybe some young folks really can't afford to have a smartphone, but most people can afford a text. So it's really meeting people where they are um, and, um, you know, in an innovative way that, um, that most people probably, you know, wouldn't think that would be effective. But you'd be surprised how you know you can build relationships through text messaging. Yeah, yeah. And, and and this is for both of you. I'll start start with Kevin. Uh, do you see? A, I mean, I feel like the industry is trying to fast track everything with VR and, and holograms and trying to create more human, you know, human experience digitally. Do you see uh, the therapy space move that direction uh, anytime soon, or we got or we got a while? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I would just say this: a private citizen went to the moon last week. So, in, in terms of like where we're headed, technology-wise, Wayne, I I am afraid to make the the predictions about sort of what's possible. I I think that there's there's a lot of possibilities of of what will happen in the future of, of care. But what I will say um, is two things about that. Number one, at our company, I have made the decision that we're gonna provide care with integrity, meaning we're not taking shortcuts. Um, and in, in our space, when, as you know, it's all about scale, it's all about growth, it's all about numbers so we can you know, get our numbers up so we can raise our next next round successfully. There are certainly temptations to to, to take a road that is okay, but it, it's probably not the highest road road that you can take. And so, you know, I've made a decision to to, to take the highest road in how we provide care. Um, I think that's important. Number two, the thing I think is really important when we think about the use of technology and what might happen is we are human beings. If we've not learned anything this last year, that there's something about 
being in and sharing space with one another, uh, feeling one's energy. The, the, there's something about being able to hug people. And so I think that, and also as sophisticated as AI can be, uh, you know, you don't need to remove that sort of human element where you're, you're really saying, okay, what does this person really mean here, right? So, so I, I said that to say, I think that in therapy in particular, right, that, you know, you, 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 there are opportunities to sort of integrate technology, but we still need a high human touch. Right. Awesome, awesome. Absolutely. I would uh, definitely agree with that. Of course, these are my opinions, not mind rights opinions, but um, I definitely, um, I definitely see the like the human the human interaction part as being essential. Um, I think eventually, yes, AI may take over at some point, um, but uh, I, I really believe the human the human touch and the human component of therapy is something that um, goes without saying that it's it's truly important um, yeah. to be able to build that relationship. Hey, Wayne, I, I actually was just was thinking about this funny, I was on social media last night and I did hear the, the previous speaker say, we need to be careful about what we take in on social media. But I admit I was on Instagram and I was scrolling and I found a clip from the Breakfast Club and and there was the uh, a, a fella who who worked at Instagram, and they were being asked the question about why do they ban uh, Little Boosie all the time because of his use of the of the of the N word, right? And 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 the folks on the Breakfast Club was sort of making this argument that the way that he used the word is culturally appropriate, you know. And, and I think that shows like the, the dy dynamic of like technology and how you, you, you know, words and technology and you have to have a hard line. You just can't say this is the rule. You gotta have a human element. Yeah, that's a great, great example. And you're right. Um, I'm, the, I'm a, as you know, I'm a super nerd and geek, but like, oh, give me the greatest, latest tech, right? Like, if I can do like, uh, um, you know, Therapy in my Oculus Real, Real Oculus Quest Two, or or um, holograms, but you you both of you are so right. Like you gotta have the human element and and uh, keep us grounded and and uh, meet meet us where we are. Um, but I want to jump one more question for you know and I, and I, as we wrap up. Um, you know how how you well maybe two more questions. How you two take care of your own wellness and your own mental health as you both work in this space to help others? Jimmy, you want to go first? Sure. Um, so I will say uh, this is a work in progress for me. Um, I'm not perfect, right? Uh, and I think that. Um, I think for most of my career, like I've really been taking care of others and somewhere along the line, I forgot to take care of myself. Um, so I've been in the last year doing better with that, with bringing in some meditation and um, just getting out and exercising more, taking breaks during the day, during the work day, um, just things like that. Um, I also enjoy, I just moved to Miami. So, you know, going to the beach often, um, things like that. So it's been really nice to do that. Uh, but really just listening to my body and listening to what I need and um, you know, providing that is what I've been kind of working off of uh, most recently. And definitely, um, you know, seeing, seeing my therapist and keeping my own mental health in check um, is also super important, particularly in working in this field. Yeah, yeah Wayne, that's a, a great question. And one of the things that Jamie said is that this is a, a work in progress. Uh, and some days, you know, I feel like, oh, I got this thing super mastered. And then other days I feel like, oh, I am a complete mess, right? And, uh, but I, what I will say is, you know, I'm, I, before the pandemic hit, I had already sort of been working on um, a bag of tools, if you will, to help me with 
my stress, to help me with my anxiety. And one of the things that's interesting as we talk about mental health or mental health companies, we also, I think, have to be honest to acknowledge that there's this tension between what is expected of us and how we run our companies and how we move our companies. There's a tension in as it relates to our mental health. And I say to my team, you know, often, if you're not experiencing this tension, if you've not experienced the tension, you're not working hard enough for the success of our company. So, and now, and I can't tell you how to develop your tools. I can give you some tips, but this tension is one that we all have to figure out. And so, you know, I wanted to say is there are kind of two ways I think about this. Number way, number one, I think about this as a company. So on Wednesdays, we've now implemented heads down time, no meetings from uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And really what that's about is people need some space to recalibrate their brains, to move from, you know, like your left side of your brain is working and then you try to go to something that requires the right side of the brain. That's not healthy. So that's super important. So I think organizationally, there are things that leaders can do um, like the heads down time. I have a, a, a 15 minute buffer between every meeting. I really want a 30 minute buffer. And that's meant for my brain to be able to make those transitions. I encourage my team members to do it too. It's not a hard rule, but I try to model it, right? Because uh, I think that that's, that's super important. Um, on, on a personal, those are some of the things that the company does. On the personal side, I like I meditate in the morning. I believe in eight hours of sleep. I absolutely need it, right? <laughs> I just, I need my sleep these days. And I try to watch my diet. Um, you know, we are what we eat. And, uh, and when I feel really tired, I give myself permission to take breaks. And, um, uh, that's, and, and I try not to feel guilty about it. Um, which is really hard in, in our space. Cause you know, there's always a question. There's always something to do. There's always an email to respond to. There's always a Slack message, but those are those are some things I do, Wayne. But it's an ongoing process. Yeah, thanks. Wayne, for one final thing I should say, I just want to mention um, this: is the community of support. You know, like the conversation you and I had a couple of weeks ago. You had James Norman on a few minutes ago. I have a monthly call with James on the books, and James helps me as a more seasoned founder think through my problem whether they're HR, whether they're investor related, but he is a sounding board. And I think that that's super important as well. Awesome, awesome, plus one, plus one. Th thanks for sharing. Um, we'll take a question from the chat, then we, we'll wrap up. Uh, great question from Kevin. What things can individuals do in advance homework that will help them determine the type of therapist that will be a good fit for that individual? Yeah, that's... That's an interesting question. I I don't I think you know I found my therapist um, that worked for me by the way through a friend saying I had this therapist and the therapist was great. The person who said that to me at the time uh, didn't even know that I was really struggling with depression in that moment. And even what we see now, even in our company, and I'm pretty sure you see the same thing, Jamie, our number one referral uh, is direct clients. So I would say to people, ask your friends, you know, like, how are you? Ha do you have a therapist? How are you taking good care of yourself? But to Jamie's point, listen, when you sit down and if it feels like you just put on a, 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 bad, a bad fitting shoe, you need to get on out of that office and, <laughs> and find your new therapist. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I would also, um, I mean, a, a lot of people, you know, we all call ourselves psychotherapists, right? Whether you're a social worker, an MFT, a psychologist, 
everyone's a psychotherapist. So everyone has different trainings, right? Um, so maybe looking into like, you know, what, what kind of training does a MFT get? What kind of training does a social worker get? You know, which one of those trainings resonates with me about what they're learning about how to deal with people. Um, and then also I would look at, you know, it's 2021, look at reviews. Go to psychologytoday.com. If your person's not on there, that would be questionable, right? Why aren't you on the biggest like search engine for, for therapists? Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, just, you know, again, going back to the perfect fit, um, they are out there. Um, you may take two or three different, you know, times or rounds of therapists for you to find that person, but do know it does exist. Um, so, you know, uh, and, and it's super important, you know, if you really want to get the work done, you need to have someone that you trust and that you can really be honest and vulnerable with. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, but that, I mean, Kevin, I appreciate you both being here. Um, much success to your companies, Mind Right and Hurdle. Um, I'm excited to see what happens in the future for both of y'all. And um, um, thank you again. Thank you, man. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Take care, Kevin. Thank you. Good to see you. All right. Good to see you.